All right, is it is it recording? I can't tell. Hi everyone and welcome to my Taylor channel, which I've decided to start because I'm just like one of the biggest Swifties in my opinion in the world. But you know, I just, I feel like I always have so many things to say with every new release. And obviously I do have friends that are Taylor fans and I have my entire family are huge Swifties. But at the end of the day, I kind of just want like a place where I can rant my theories my thoughts my everything and um and yeah just have that be like a location where I can delve into the Swifty realm and people can watch so I thought like what what better place would it be if we could start with TTPD which is coming out in a couple days in eight days and I thought to count down the days you know I could just I could make this video right now and I could talk about all my theories and my you know my initial thoughts when I first saw the track list and just everything about the album. And I'm so excited to talk about it. So here we go. The Tortured Poets Department, TS11. First off, so incredibly excited. I feel like this is one of those albums where we're getting it so early on in the year, April, that I'm just like, I'm a little shocked because she normally always saves her albums for September through December. Those four months are typically... Just more album releases. I mean, we recently, obviously, you know, 1989 TV, Midnight's came out October 21st. 1989 TV came out October 27th. Evermore came out December 11th. But, I mean, there, I, you know, now that I think about it, we do have, obviously, sprinklings like Folklore, Speak Now TV, Fearless TV. I mean, they all came out, you know, summer and spring. So this makes sense. I mean, it's not a new concept. But, um, what was I, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, TTPD. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is so haywire right now because this is, I mean, this is my first time filming a video for this channel. Like, if it becomes a thing, I don't know. I don't know. So I figured, let's talk about it. So we're going to start with, first of all, I did stay up. I did stay up the night of the Grammys because I was like, oh, something's happening. I didn't know if it was TS11 or if it was Rep TV. I mean, we, everybody thought it was Rep TV, right? And it, it wasn't. But anyways, um, honestly, deep down, I feel like I had a little bit of a theory that it was TS11. And people are going to be like... Ha 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 ha, like, no, you didn't, you're just saying that. And to be fair, I understand why that would, like, I understand why people would think that. At the same time, though, I had the same thing with the um, Eras Tour opener. Like, I was one of those people being like, is it gonna be Miss American and the Heartbreak Prince? Because of the fact that she ended her post with, it's been a long time coming. And I was like, uh, hello, like, that feels like a sign. At least I knew it was gonna be on the set list because of that. And then I was like, could it be the opener? And I was so happy it was because, oh, what's going on with my microphone? There we go. Because I love Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince. But anyways, so it's Grammys Day, right? And I'm watching the Grammys and oh my God, I'm watching it on a live stream. And I was so lucky because I was waiting for a pop vocal album because I was like, well, Taylor's obviously going to win it. And I was like, well, if this is the first one that she wins, this might be the one where she announces it. Um, because I almost think it does make more sense for her to have announced it then than an album of the year, because I feel like an album of the year, since it's album of the year and it's like the biggest Grammy of the night, I feel like she would have wanted to use that time to really focus on Midnight's and her prior work, because that's obviously what the night is about. At the same time, yes, TTPD is, uh, a fortunate, you know, new piece of information that was shared with us that night, but I agree with the choice of announcing it on, um, Best Pop Vocal Album. Now, um, oh my god, so I was watching, and I was on the grainiest live stream ever on, um, I think it was TikTok. Yeah, it was TikTok. It was not Instagram, it was TikTok. And <laughs> when I heard I'm announcing my brand new album, first of all, I wasn't shocked at that point. I was, well, obviously I was shocked, but I was like, oh my god, this, and then I heard the title, and I was like, she did not just do that. That is crazy, because I was like, that's such a cool title, first of all. You know, it has such um, it has such a importance. I feel like to its title in comparison to all her past albums. I feel like it has such um, such a distinctness. Like it's not a title we've ever heard from her before. It's not anything that's very similar to anything she's ever. And oh my god, the aesthetic of the album, the cover. Because then she went backstage and she posted the cover, and when I saw it, I was like, oh my god, it reminded me of. It just reminded me of some of like the great. First of all, in my opinion. It's actually shocking to me that, in my opinion, her best album covers have both come out of last year. It was Speak Now TV and 1989 TV, I think, are her best album covers. Like, close, close, close behind them, I would maybe say... 
Folklore really was kind of a, a game-changing cover. When you think about what Folklore was at the time and how we had never seen anything like like it in comparison, obviously people are going to bring up Rep and also Original 1989, both amazing album covers, and Original Speak Now. But I just think Speak Now TV and 1989 TV are just the best album covers that we've seen from her. But anyways, I saw the TTPD album cover and I, oh my god, I freaked out. I actually freaked out. It's actually not okay how much I was screaming. <laughs> I wish I had a video of it, but I don't. Oh, wow, look at that sunlight. And I can't lower the blinds, too, because they're broken. So thanks a lot, sunlight. But anyways, um, then the next day, we get the back album cover. And for a second there, because um, the track titles are on the side, and they're a little bit smaller, I didn't fully fathom what it was for, like, several seconds. And I was like, cool, it's a great photo. And then I saw it. I was like, oh, my God, it's... The the track list and uh we got the little we got the little um countdown here so seven days um all right so we're gonna talk track list so track one Fortnite. and oh my god first of all Fortnite. very important word considering the fact that there's a distinction between the fact that Fortnite is not a word in american lingo it's not a word in american english it's only a word from england and if you think about that obviously then you have the tie-in between Joe and also the fact that, you know, a fortnight prior to April 19th, that's literally when we found out last year about her breakup. And it's, I remember that night like it was yesterday. I remember I had just finished watching The Devil Wears Prada um, for the first time. Isn't that crazy? Such a good movie, by the way. Um, oh, someone's texting me. And I was like... I was so shocked. My mom texted me. She said, come upstairs. And for a second there, I thought I was in trouble. I was like, what did I do? I go upstairs and she shows me the news article. And I, I'm like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Then we all freak out. And we're like, we can't believe this. We can't believe this. So obviously Fortnite is a song that I definitely believe is about Joe. Obviously, I think so. And, um, and featuring Post Malone. If we're talking Fortnite featuring Post Malone, then, well, Post Malone always has kind of had that like sad boy kind of like, uh, well, at least that's how um, certain people describe it. Like sad, you know, like kind of melancholia in music is what I like think about when I think of his music. And so I feel like it fits the theming considering Fortnite. It feels like it feels like the song is touching on something that is really um, it's really, you know, talking about the initial aftermath. And it's not talking about kind of, oh, I'm getting over someone It's talking about the split second after the fall and probably you know the pain that coincides with that so i feel like post malone was a good choice you know to be on that song i really i'm excited to see what that song sounds like and i mean people people are talking about the fact that that sounds like it would be one of the singles and i, I mean i agree i think so um so track two title track the tortured poets department and this is the one i'm probably one of the ones i'm most curious about because i'm like how does that fit into a title i want to know i want to know if that's talking about Maybe it's talking about her legacy and like this, um, maybe the fandom she's created or maybe the friends she's made that have helped her get through the pain of losing, oh, this is crooked, sorry, the pain of losing this relationship that was so important to her, that was so long, that was such a long, you know, stage in her life. I mean, if you consider her and Joe were almost together for almost seven years, so... I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the Tortured Post Department of the Song is going to be about, and that's definitely one that I'm really excited to see what it's like. I'm also so, I'm so waiting for these song lengths because I just feel like a song length is really important to how you perceive a certain song. I don't know. And also I'm weird like that because I am obsessed with, I'm obsessed with, you know, me making a correlation there. Like literally the other day, someone was asking me, oh, do you remember what happened at this, you know, when this package was delivered? My dad asked me when his package was delivered. And I was like, yeah, it was 3 11 exactly and he said how did you know that and i was like oh because i remember it was 3 11 and i looked at my phone and i said oh that's the exact same you know mastermind the song is three minutes 11 seconds and my dad was just like oh, what is what is with you and i was like you can't change me i'm a swifty all right so track three my boy only breaks his favorite toys and this is one of the ones i'm most excited for most excited for sorry i was like i don't know um you know what it really struck me as? You know what this song really struck me when I was thinking about it as? Why am I like, why am I tripping on my words so much? Anyways, you know what um, I was thinking about? Because in Hits Different, in the second verse, she was talking about Ken's. 
Just tell me. Um, I used to switch out these cans. Sorry, my camera was doing something weird. So I used to switch out these cans and I was like, oh, wow. So that's like, there's references throughout our songs to kind of treating people as if they're not really, not animate, but, you know, just treating people as if they're not alive. Like treating people as if they're, you know, things that can just be used, toys, basically. And with reference to this, I feel like this really harkens back, My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, to a lot of her lyrics about her relationship with Joe from, like, the earlier songs. Like, Peace, Your Integrity Makes Me Seem Small. And I feel like we really, we should have seen the signs earlier, because, Loki, there are some things there where you can tell that maybe Joe wasn't, like, this, maybe their relationship wasn't the Cinderella story, which was super sweet and great and exactly what she needed. I mean, obviously... It was a human relationship between two people and you can never understand what happened between them and you can never blame either one of them. So at the end of the day, like, obviously we know nothing about what happened between the two of them. It was their love story. But we know that clearly there were moments where he was shitty to her. And like, there was probably just like, there was animosity between the two of them at times, obviously, because that's just what happens in relationships. But ultimately, I really do think that this song, I think this song is going to be, first of all, this is one of the ones that I pegged as one of my, my favorites, which I obviously I don't know yet, but this is one of the songs that I'm like, woohoo, I'm really excited to hear what this sounds like. All right. So track four, Down Bad. And oh, I just smacked my microphone. Whoops. So Down Bad. First of all, Down Bad, funnily enough, I'm comparing it also to Hits Different, mainly because Down Bad is another one of those kind of more current common phrases like slang almost so it's like i don't know it down bad down bad is one of the ones that i'm also really excited for when i hear it it makes me think of don't blame me i don't know why maybe it's just because they both start with d's and they're both track fours but anyways um also we don't really know what this is going to be about i wonder if either this is going to be out uh, this is either going to be like um a song that's been written more recently and it's about travis or maybe i feel like i need to be more center frame anyways or maybe it's a song about, you know, sorry, maybe it's a song about, you know, maybe, hmm, how am I trying to word this? Maybe it's a song that she wrote now, fathoming how she treated him at the beginning of the relationship, where she thought that he was this, you know, like, prince, this knight in shining armor. And that really does bring up the thought of, like, did she, did she, you know idolize him a lot at the beginning of the relationship and we know that she did with songs like lover and other songs like that but ultimately what i'm trying to say is is she now fathoming the fact that maybe that was maybe that wasn't the best approach but considering like after the fallout of you know the 2016 2016 scandal and how you know when we see in reputation a lot she is you know feeling so safe in their relationship in comparison to how she's being treated in the media and in the world in general and maybe Down Bad is fathoming how maybe, you know, she, maybe she just didn't, maybe she just didn't think it all through at the beginning. And she was trying to, she was trying to promote this idea of the fact that they're, that, you know, he, he, you know, was, was good for her. Because maybe, maybe he wasn't good for her. We don't know. Again, um, also, we don't know what Down Bad, because maybe she's not using it as a slang term. Maybe she's using it as like down bad and like depression and melancholia all these different you know i mean we know now from her playlist that she has you know subscribed to this theory that the swifties are making that you know the albums the album colors for the variants you know discuss the five steps of grief i don't know maybe maybe down bad's about that and then that kind of transitions well into track five which is so long london and So Long London is probably the song that's been getting, like, the most. I'm not sure if, um, I mean, there's been a lot of talk about a lot of songs. But So Long London, obviously, it's a track five. So we know it's it's probably going to be, like, one of the best songs ever written. And I'm going to cry. And it's going to be great. But anyway, So Long London, I mean, obviously, we know this is about Joe. And I think it's really interesting that she's referencing, hmm, she's kind of, She's kind of personifying the whole city in the same way that she does with Cornelia Street. Because, I mean, when we talk about Cornelia Street, she's talking about, obviously, their apartment on Cornelia Street, which, oh my god, I cannot believe I went to Cornelia Street the last summer of their relationship to see it. It was so cool. 
Because before, every time we went to New York, I was always pretty young. So my parents never let me go off on my own. So, and then I went to Cornelius Street when I was 16, because I'm 18 now. So yeah, it would have been two summers ago, 2022. And, um, what was I saying? And yeah, and I, and I was like, let's, to my friend, Antalya, who lives, um, who lives there. And I was like, let's go to Cornelius Street. Like, please take me, please take me. So we walked, we walked across the whole city to get there. Um, but anyways, so, so long London. I mean, yeah, she personifies the city, obviously. It's really interesting how... She's taking this motif of using places to reference kind of the loss in their relationship because I do think that that is a really important factor in how you can grieve. If you latch memories onto people, you're going to feel loss in like myriad ways. And for that reason, I think So Long London might be one of the, what maybe one of the best songs of the album. Obviously, again, I don't know, but I'm just, you know, I'm just hoping, hoping, here's hoping. All right. Oh, my God. The song I'm most excited for, Track 6, But Daddy, I Love Him. And this song, first of all, we got to talk about, obviously, 1989, the year she was born. What else came out in 1989? The original Little Mermaid. We know Taylor was a huge fan of the Little Mermaid as a little kid. And the fact that But Daddy, I Love Him is a quote from Ariel, who, by the way, is also my favorite Disney princess, just saying. So me and Taylor are like this. Um. Anyways. The fact that this is a quote from Ariel and the story revolves around her giving up her voice to be with the man she loves. Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, oh God, this is going to be such a good song. And I feel like this is one of those songs where it's really going to shock me production wise. Cause I had the same thing about Midnight Rain. I thought Midnight Rain was going to be a bit more of a classic -y sort of song for her. Maybe hearkening back to her, you know, more country or like, have more of a country or a rock influence. And I didn't realize Midnight Rain was going to be this uh, more produced. Obviously, the whole album of Midnight's is pretty synth pop. But in general, I didn't I didn't peg Midnight Rain as one of the ones where it would be um, like a very synthy production. And obviously it was. I mean, Midnight Rain, maybe it has like, if you think objectively, maybe it has the most, considering she has that filter over her voice for all the choruses. Well, except for one chorus. Um, but... Yeah, that's kind of what I have in mind now for Bet But Daddy, I Love Him. I kind of feel like it's going to be a more poppy sounding production, more so than maybe some of the other songs. Because, I mean, the jury's still out on what's going to be the production style of the Tortured Poets Department. We really don't know yet. And we're not going to know for seven days, 12 hours, 37 minutes, and 54 seconds. Um, but But Daddy, I Love Him is a song I'm incredibly excited for. People have also been bringing up the fact that... Um, Harry Styles was once seen wearing a shirt that said, but daddy, I love him. That was around the same time that the rumors of him being Prince Eric in the live action were happening. And I don't know. I don't really think the song's going to be about Harry Styles. If it is, okay. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the hugest Harry Styles fan. So, you know, whatever. Okay. Track seven, Fresh at the Slammer. Fresh at the Slammer is one of those songs that I think is really interestingly titled because I'm like, this is a song that we've never gotten a title like this before. I feel like this is, it's very, it feels almost angry. It feels, but it feels angry in a really positive way. Angry at the past, angry at the fact that she was locked up and ready to live this free life. And I feel like this is, this is proving to me that the Tortured Poets Department, the Tortured Poets Department isn't going to be that similar to past breakup albums. It's not going to be a red where obviously there are, fun songs talking about the breakup we are never ever getting back together but there it's not going to be like an entirely more sad ballady weepy album it's gonna be an album talking about freedom and when you think about that it's impossible it's impossible not to note the fact that literally april 19th 1775 was the day that the american revolutionary war started and the following year july 4th 1776 was when America gained freedom from Britain. Like, come on, come on. Like, that is such an interesting tie-in thematically to the fact that, you know, she's 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 done with this relationship. She's done with this relationship. Joe, Joe's gone. Joe, London boy from, from Britain, you know, it's over. And that's a really cool tie-in. It's also World Poetry Day, so... There's another little theme in. I swear, the universe is built for Taylor. The universe is just built for Taylor. 
Like, come on. It just is. Literally every day always lines up. All right, track eight. Yeah. Sorry, I had to pause for a second. Florida! Fleetry... Fleetering. Did I just say fleetering? I'm so silly. Okay. Featuring Florence and the Machine. First of all, I've never been a huge Florence and the Machine fan. Not because I don't like her music or their music. Is it a band? Is it, Are there like... Is, is the Machine actually like a band? I think so. But I mean, Florence is the main singer. What I mean is I don't dislike Florence Wel- Florence Welsh's music. I just have never gotten into it that much. Like I've never really delved into her discography. I really like, uh, obviously, Shake It Out. I know, um, is it called Dog Days Are Over? I think it is. I like that song. I really do. And people have been saying that Florida has kind of, um, what I saw, it was like a, like a Rococo synthy sound to it. That's like what the description was that someone recently gave. And I'm really excited to hear this. This is one of the songs people are like most talking about considering the first show, the first Aeros Tour show that we, you know, that happened after we got the breakup news were the shows in Tampa. Like, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I also think it's interesting that Miami, the Miami shows were separated for the second American leg for the second North American leg, the North American leg. Yeah. Um, that are going to happen. They're going to happen later, later this year. Um, so yeah, I don't really have that many thoughts on Florida. I'm just excited to see what it's like. Next is guilty as sin question, question mark. And first of all, this immediately brings me back to Carolina, which by the way, is one of my favorite songs of hers. I love Carolina so much. I actually sang it in 2022 at a, a talent show. So yeah, I love that song. But anyways, um, you had the lyric that I was guilty as sin and sleep in a liar's bed. That, that lyric? Oh my God. First of all, I mean, obviously I don't think it's going to have too similar a theme to Carolina considering Carolina was, um, a narrative story through Kaya's perspective from where the crawdads sing. And, but guilty as sin, I'm just, I'm just so incredibly excited about this. And I think this is really going to be discussing the, you know, you know, the idea that there's always this notion that you have to place the blame in a relationship. It, I think in in fandoms and in relationships between two people, I think that's kind of what Guilty of Sin might be, you know, referencing. Next we have Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? And obviously I think this, this is a reference to the play Who's Afraid of... Well, I don't think obviously, but I think this could be, you know, a literary reference, um to, yeah, or I guess you dramaturgic reference to the fact that there's a play called Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? And who's that by? Because who's afraid of Virginia Woolf? I obviously, I, I love Virginia Woolf's novels. I'm actually studying Mrs. Dalloway right now. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Let's see. It's a play by Edward Albee that was first performed in 1962. It depicts the troubled marriage of a middle-aged couple, George and Martha, and the emotional and psychological games they play with each other and with their guests, a young couple named Nick and Honey. Okay. Well, that kind of already, you know, helps us see the, the, you know, the line as to where maybe the reference is coming from, considering, you know, in the emotional and psychological games they play with each other. Like, I think that really does show us where you know where where you know where she's coming from with this title and with this song now i'm just reading about this play this is interesting hmm anyways uh next title i can fix him no really i can i mean what's not to love about this title right like this is a really it's 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 poking fun at it itself it's tongue-in-cheek it's i love songs with brackets where they give you like a little bit more information it's really cute it feels like a wink it feels like a nod it feels like breaking the fourth wall like and i like that she she's been doing that more recently with her she's been having a lot of fun recently with her albums like ending 1989 tv with is it over now like as like a little is the album over now like pun i like that i like that sort of thing it makes it it makes it cute it makes it fun it makes it a little bit more playful and obviously she loves you know talking to her fans and engaging with us to discuss her work and like but in a fun way but also in an educational way and so I just I just I I like this title you know and I don't know I think someone said some reporter said that there's not going to be as much Joe content on the album as we think but honestly I think that's probably maybe 
maybe i don't think that that's true i actually believe i mean when looking at a lot of these titles i could see how a lot of them would work in the context of a relationship with him so i don't know next track oh my god wait is is loml track 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 it is loml is track 13 and it's the only lowercase track so obviously we know that loml i think taylor's so smart that we wouldn't have just gotten mm -hmm. love of my life like if it was love of my life it would have been love of my life but if it's love of my life we wouldn't have gotten it as loml i think loml is gonna change throughout the song and i obviously i don't i didn't come up with that theory everybody's been talking about that and there have been several examples like loss of my life lie of my life and then there's a reference to the fact that the the albatross edition of the tortured poets department the cover looks like the cover for joe's or the the character profile for joe in his new movie is it called last of my letters which is loml let's see last of my letters joe alwyn the last letter from your lover is what it's called. Wow. Like, see, does that not look like it does, doesn't it? That's pretty cool. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a funny text. So, yeah, I think LOML, it's probably maybe the vaguest one we have. So it's the most, it's the one that's most shrouded with mystery. And we're most like, oh, what's that going to be like? <laughs> I can do it with a broken heart. We need to talk about the lyrics that she posted yesterday because, or two days ago, because it was the day of the solar eclipse. And because people think, people think it's between I can do it with a broken heart or Clara Bow. And I can do it with a broken heart. Ooh, we know that that's probably talking about us. We know that that's probably talking about her feeling like she has to rev herself up to be, to be bejeweled again and go out on stage again with the Eras tour. And I think, I definitely think she really at that moment needed to go on tour she needed that you know she needed she needed the warmth and love of her fans and her supporters and i i love that so i can do it with a broken heart i definitely think that's about performing and you know understanding that she's a superstar because at the end of the day joe started dating her because she you know because she wanted that hidden lifestyle at, at that time at that time but not forever and I don't think he fully fathomed that. So, anyways. The smallest man who ever lived. And the smallest man who ever lived, honestly, now in my brain, because Taylor Nation posted a little caption with the smallest man who ever lived to a photo of Benjamin Button. And now, honestly, that's all I can ever associate with it. I'm like, Benjamin! Like, oh my god, her, her little baby. But also now it's making me think of that movie. And, which I don't think I've ever seen the movie. Is it called Benjamin Button? Or it's called like The Curious Tale of Benjamin Button or something like that. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. And yeah, I think this is also one of the ones I'm most excited for. I feel like I'm I'm damaging my computer because I keep resting my phone on it. But like, I'm so excited for this song. I don't really have many words for it again. But again, I think it really, it brings us back to peace. You know, your integrity makes me seem small. You paint dreamscapes on my wall. Like, I think I think she's understanding finally that it was it was maybe messed up of him to be making her feel small and that's kind of that is kind of a shitty thing to do. I mean I know obviously then she makes reference um to the fact that he has he probably did have some, you know, mental health issues. I mean, she talks in peace about like when your cascade ocean wave blues come. And I think obviously it doesn't necessarily I I'm I'm never going to say I don't think I'm going to say that he was at fault for anything considering I don't know. I was not in that relationship, you know, but I mean, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. And I'm excited to see how the smallest man who ever lived turns out. So we have the alchemy and the alchemy. When I first heard this title, I was like, oh, this is 100% going to go the way of Epiphany, Labyrinth, you know, those sort of songs, which are masterpieces in my opinion, but don't get the love that they deserve. And the alchemy, first of all, we have so many references to Joe in her discography being gold. I mean, I want to search up a list of all of the gold references. Um, gold references, Joe Alwyn. I wonder if there's like a, a list. Yes. Haha. -ha. So we have Endgame. But where did the list just go? I'm on a, I'm on a Reddit. I'm on a Reddit thread. 
and it's not showing me oh sorry this post was deleted by the person who originally posted it all right well we have so many references to gold oh i just opened spotify by accident we have so many references to gold in her discography and the alchemy well alchemy in general was a practice where they thought that they could turn you know for hundreds of years they thought that they could turn is it bronze into gold what is it medieval whose aims were the transmutation of the base metals into gold yeah so kind of turning things that aren't as valuable as they are into value and re the thing is they realized that alchemy was never possible so ultimately i think that that's what this song is going to be about yep 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 yep, yep. super excited for that one and then final track on the standard edition, Clara Bow. Clara Bow, oh, Clara Bow. So excited for the fact that the last song in the standard edition is, it's it's a person's name. Like, that's so cool. First of all, Clara Bow, I recently saw that her star in the Hollywood Walk of Fame was fixed, so yay. Because, and I'm sure it probably was, like, Swifties who, who, who helped fight for that. Um because you know now we now we know who she was i didn't know who clara bow was before before the album track list was revealed but anyways um so she was a silent film star she was a silent movie star back in the 1920s who successfully made the transition to the talkies which was regular movies um and the fact that she's silent again th there's this theme of the silencing that i think really goes hand in hand with all the lyrics she's had in the past about joe and how like sometimes he does make her feel you know how how he has made her seem small you know your integrity makes me seem small like again it's just that like that sense of di diminution like that maybe he was like forcing in their relationship and in their interactions and i'm trying to find out the lyrics so let me go to Taylor Nation's page because I think that the lyrics that she posted yesterday or not Taylor Nation's page, Taylor, Taylor's, I screenshotted it, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I did. So what's going on? The crowd goes wild at her fingertips, half sunshine, full eclipse. I'm just saying like that feels to me like it could be I can do it with a broken heart and could be referencing, you know, the Eras Tour, but at the same time, I do think it's referencing Half Moonshine. Sorry, I, I misread that. Half Moonshine, Full Eclipse. I do think it could be referencing Clara Bow. I also saw somewhere that Moonshine, um, the alcohol, was, like, associated with Clara Bow in some, somehow. Let me search that up. Moonshine, Clara Bow. <laughs> okay. Moonshine being a bit of an antiquated term for alcohol, particularly during the Prohibition, Ah, okay, 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 okay. So it's it's not an alcohol, it's just alcohol. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, guys. I'm Gen Z. Um, oh, wow. I'm so excited for this album. So that's the final track of the standard edition. I'm probably going to make another video discussing the four bonus tracks, too, because I just, I just want to, because it's fun. It's fun, and I'm so excited for some of those. I mean, the manuscript, the albatross. I'm excited for the black dog and the bolter, too, but... The manuscript and the albatross are the ones I'm most excited for. So I'll save that for another video. But thank you for watching. If you are watching, if anybody's watching, Loki, I'm making this for myself, like just for fun. But I'm also like, I'm hoping people watch. So thank you so much and bye.